Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Gilligan's Island is part slapstick, part a buddy comedy, a survival show, and most of all, just a goofy 1960s classic. The 1964 to 1967 sitcom dealt with seven castaways, five passengers, and two crew members who planned to embark on a relaxing, casual pleasure cruise. But that three-hour tour quickly turns disastrous. When weather starts getting rough, it sends the SS Minnow out to sea, where it comes to rest on a remote island that's not found on any map. Those that are left to fend for themselves and each other is an assorted bunch. There's the bumbling first mate, Gilligan, played by Bob Denver, the skipper, played by Alan Hale Jr., the tycoon, Thurston Howell III, played by Jim Bacchus, and his wife, and true love, Lovey, played by Natalie Schaefer. There's also screen siren Ginger, played by Tina Louise, and the inventive professor, played by Russell Johnson, and everybody's girl-next-door favorite, Mary Ann, played by Don Wells. The premise for the show is fairly straightforward in that there are seven people from different walks of life that are forced to rely on each other for their survival after being stuck on this remote island. This is pretty much the same idea that you see explored later on in television shows like Survivor and Lost, but this takes place in the mid-1960s which made it a really bizarre concept for a sitcom because everything else during that time dealt with landlocked families. Sherwood Schwartz had had the idea for this comedy bouncing around in his head for years and years. While taking a class on public speaking at New York University, he and his fellow students were tasked with writing a one-minute speech about the one item that they would take with them if they were stranded on an island. Swartz then became a TV writer and landed jobs on several shows. When it came time to come up with his own show, he went back to the idea of that remote island and how it would be sociologically interesting to present a varied group of people stuck together in somewhat of a social microcosm and the fact that given the conditions, all of them could figure out a way to get along. Even though the creator thought about the ideas and the themes behind the show for a long time, he didn't exactly nail the concept of the series on the first try. On November 22, 1963, Gilligan's Island shot its pilot episode, which was sent to CBS for consideration of becoming a regular series that following fall. The network did go ahead and order more episodes of the show, but that show would enter production looking quite a bit different than the one suggested by the pilot. The characters of Ginger and Mary Ann, who are a movie star and a Midwestern farmer's daughter, originally took the form of secretaries named Ginger and Bunny, and they were played by Kit Smythe and Nancy McCarthy instead of Tina Louise and Don Wells. The professor was just as smart and smug as he ended up being in the long haul, but he was portrayed by a different actor, that being John Gabriel instead of Russell Johnson. In the end, that pilot completely disappeared. After reading about the episode, an employee of cable station TBS went looking for it and made some phone calls to the corporate office. The negatives for that pilot, which sat untouched for 30 years, was found in the archives of the Turner-owned MGM United Artists Library. TBS went on to air that episode for the first time in October of 1992. The actors who ultimately won the seven roles as the castaways became forever cemented in our mind and closely associated with the work on this sitcom. With the exception of the many lives of Dobie Gillis 
veteran Bob Denver, none of the performers were household names before being sent off to this fictional island. Jerry Van Dyke, a TV veteran and brother of Dick Van Dyke, was urged by his agency into signing on. He didn't like the idea of the show, and he turned it down to take his role in My Mother the Car, a super short-lived sitcom that he quickly regretted. Dabney Coleman bombed his screen test for the show, trying to get the part of The Professor, while All in the Family legend Carol O'Connor just narrowly missed out on the chance to play the skipper. Former bombshell Jane Mansfield passed on the opportunity that she had to play Ginger. Now, there's always been a creepy legend that went along with the show, and that is that each of the deadly sins was perfectly represented by a different Gilligan's Island character, and that the island itself represented hell where they were placed due to their transgressions from which they could never escape. The creator of the show admitted that the seven deadly sins aspect was actually true. The characters and their fatal flaw are like this. The very smarty pants professor was guilty of pride. The wealth accumulating Mr. Powell was covetous. Ginger was lusty. Miss Howe suffered from anger. The skipper engaged in gluttony, and Mary Ann represented envy. The lazy Gilligan was the embodiment of sloth. Mary Ann and Ginger were seen in everything from short shorts to crop tops and luxury gowns. Since they were on this island, sweaters and turtlenecks weren't needed at all. But their clothing became a real topic, and sometimes a heated one, during the series' reign with some people disapproving strongly of how much skin was shown in it. People really got worked up about their wardrobes. The CBS censors came unglued about Mary Ann's navel showing, or the fact that Tina Louise was busting out of her top with her curvy cleavage. Don Wells said that they were constantly having to cover themselves up more because this was a constant topic of debate. Her character had a signature look with Daisy Duke shorts, fitted blue jeans, crop tops, or collared shirts, with Tina Louise's character as a glamorous movie star who would often be seen as if she was going to a red carpet event. But the one thing the show really realized was that Mary Ann and Ginger and the clothes they wore and the skin that they showed had a big bearing on the reason for the show's success. So the production was constantly juggling how much of their skin to show to keep the viewers coming back, but yet be able to keep the censors at bay. Take a look at Gilligan's Island. It's a really fun show to watch. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.